Hi, I'm Juliana and I desperately want to fix my sleep schedule. So in this video, I'm doing just that in one week. This is the first episode of my self-care search series where I explore different self-care practices to see what actually makes an improvement to our overall well-being. Listen, I'm tired of going to bed at 3 a.m., overworking myself into a burnout and going through phases where I don't feel like doing anything at all because I know that there's so many self-care techniques out there that I can incorporate into my life and that will help me in the long term. So here, I'm documenting my journey as I get one step closer to the ultimate self-care regime. Now you may ask why I want to fix my sleep schedule. Well, at the beginning of the pandemic, it felt really nice to stay up late and hit snooze in the morning because why not? But now I have bags under my eyes, I feel exhausted in the mornings, and I can't remember the last time I went to bed before 12 a.m. I also loved the idea of having a really early and peaceful morning. And I realized that a lot of the good habits like meditating, and working out, they're great to get done first thing in the morning, but with my current sleep schedule, I'm not able to squeeze that in because I just wake up and go directly to work. And then on top of that, I started researching the importance of sleep. I came across a time article about what the ideal bedtime is, and it interviews two different sleep experts from the University of California and Stanford University. The article talks about non-REM and REM sleep, which is the two main categories that sleep is typically divided into. Now these come in 90 minute cycles and have different stages, but that's not important. What we need to know is that both non-REM and REM sleep have important benefits, but research have found that non-REM sleep is deeper and more restorative than the lighter and more dream infused REM sleep. But the thing is that the shift between non-REM to REM sleep only happens at certain times during the night, regardless of when we go to sleep. So if you go to bed at 3 a.m., you'll miss out on all the deep and restorative sleep, leaving you grog in the next day which I know all about and when it comes to when to go to sleep there's a window of several hours roughly between 8 p.m. and 12 a.m. during which our body and brain have the opportunity to get all the non-REM and REM sleep we need to function optimally. So that article was super interesting and then I also picked up a book called Why We Sleep by Matthew Walker and I realized that he's actually one of the people that were interviewed in that article that I just mentioned but anyway so just from reading the first few pages of this book it has already made me realize how much I need to fix my sleep and how important it is. It points out how sleep is a global problem and how sleep disruption contributes to major psychiatric conditions such as anxiety and depression. And it also links major health problems to lack of sleep. And it basically sums it up by saying that the shorter you sleep, the shorter your lifespan is, which is just crazy to think about. So what's the plan? Well, studies suggest that we should get at least seven to nine hours of sleep each night. And I definitely need more towards the nine hours I know that would be really ideal for me and so the plan is to shift my sleep schedule with 15 minutes each night so by this time next week I should hopefully be able to wake up feeling refreshed and well rested at 7 30 a.m. I've also found lots of useful tips online on how to wake up and go to bed earlier that I'll try out throughout this video so with that let's just get started so night one actually went pretty well because I know that if I wasn't doing this video, I'd probably just continue reading till 1 a.m. But because I went to bed earlier, I woke up around 9, which is not really unusual for me. But since it's Saturday, I had time to just sit by the window and read, which is really nice. And so exposure to sunlight is actually a great way to feel more awake in the morning. And it has something to do with our circadian rhythm, which is our internal clock. It tells our body when we're supposed to feel awake and when we we're supposed to feel sleepy and so by being around sunlight it boosts our cortisol levels and it's even better if we're actually outside so i thought why not go for a walk <laughs> day three and so far the main challenge has just been falling asleep earlier because even though I do go to bed a bit earlier I still lay awake for a bit and it takes me a while to actually fall asleep and so Becky who also has a YouTube channel she recommended that I tried an app called sleep cycle and it's actually really cool because you put it next to your bed and then the microphone is facing like towards you and then it actually listens to you while you sleep and it can tell if you're awake or if you're in deep sleep and then based on that it gives you these really cool stats in the morning so I can actually see that it does take 
take me about half an hour, sometimes more, to actually fall asleep. So my main mission right now is just trying to do everything that I can to unwind and make myself feel relaxed so I can fall asleep earlier. And the first tip is actually to wear blue light glasses. Um, these are mine. And so yeah, I wear these in the evening. I've actually used blue light glasses for about two years or something. And I wear them often when I'm on my laptop or I'm watching TV. Another thing that's recommended is if you can, change the colors of your lights into a really like yellow color that's really good to do in the evenings and so i actually have philips hue lights bul light bulbs in this room and so i can change the color of the lights into like a really orangey yellow color and so another tip that i haven't tried yet is to lower the body temperature and you can do that by either lowering the temperature in the room or you can take a shower or bath two hours before bed and so it doesn't have to be like a cold shower or anything unpleasant like that it's actually when you walk out of the shower that's when the body temperature drops because you've been in a hot shower and then you walk out and apparently that's really good for your system because lowering the body temperature makes us fall asleep better and so that's something that i will try and then another thing that has to do with body temperature is about eating so it says we should eat light in the evenings because the energy it takes to digest increases the body temperature and again we want to like lower the body temperature before we go to bed but then it also says not to go to bed hungry either because hunger increases the chance of waking up in the middle of the night because of a drop in blood glucose levels and that increases cortisol which is the stress hormone so yeah those were the tips for today and and I'll go make myself a bath and then head to bed. It is just past lunchtime on day six. And I finally feel like I have something to update you on because, drum roll please, Yesterday, I went to bed at 11 p.m. and I woke up this morning at 8 a.m. And I feel like that's really huge for me because it, uh, yeah, I can't remember the last time I've done that and actually feel refreshed and gotten enough hours of sleep. But that basically means that it's taken me almost a week to just shift my sleep schedule one hour back. This morning I had a dentist appointment and I decided to walk back and forth to the dentist, which is 20 minutes one way and 20 minutes back, just to get some exercise because exercise is actually a great idea to feel more awake and to promote better sleep. And that is because cortisol is released and it doesn't have to be very long it just has to be like at least 10 minutes of exercise and a study actually found that people who exercise in the morning spend 75% more time in the deep sleep stage which sounds great because based on the app that I told you about I can see that I'm not spending like huge amounts in the deep sleep stage so yeah that's definitely something that I should do more of. Another thing that I've been doing this week is to not drink caffeine afternoon because when researching sleep I actually found out that caffeine can be in our body for up to eight hours and that also means that we don't spend as much time in the deep sleep stage and so I don't drink coffee or anything like that i just drink green tea but yeah i've been limiting my green tea to just like one cup in the morning and then i'm good for the rest of the day i now have one day left of this week-long sleep challenge and i'm only half an hour away from waking up at 7 30 a.m which is the goal so i'll try to see if i can go to bed half an hour early tonight so yeah let's try do that and tomorrow i'll let you know all my key takeaways from the week so it turns out that I was actually able to get to bed 30 minutes earlier and wake up at 7.30 a.m. Which makes me super happy because it means that I reached my goal and it just shows that it is possible to shift your sleep schedule a little bit at a time. I've definitely seen some sleep challenges online where it's all about staying up all night and then in the evening you're so tired that you're like forced to go to bed earlier. And I'm just really happy that 
I was able to do this in a very like natural way that didn't mean that I had to like force myself to like go to bed or stay up all night or anything like that so yeah I'm happy that I was able to do it in a very like natural and healthy way that was good for my body in terms of learnings there are three things that I would do definitely if I had to do this challenge again and these are also tips if you want to try something similar to reset your sleep schedule and first of all I would prioritize exercising in the mornings because I did notice on the days where I did exercise Exercise, I felt more like relaxed and ready for bed um, in the evenings and again it is proven that people who exercise spend more time in deep sleep so yeah it's uh, it's a good excuse to actually put in some exercise in the morning and then secondly I would set an alarm for unwinding because um, obviously throughout the week I had different times that I had to go to bed so I would actually in some days set and do something like do work or something else and then I would like look at the clock and I'd be like oh shoot I need to be in bed and like fall asleep in 10 minutes so I would like rush to get ready for bed but then I would just lay there and it would be like really unsatisfying because I love reading before bed so going forward I think I'll set a timer for 9 to 9 30 p.m so I know that okay now it's time to like put down work and slowly get ready for bed and like take off my makeup do my skincare lay in bed for a bit and just read I feel like that would be the dream <laughs> and then the very last point is to be aware of the psychological phenomenon called revenge bedtime procrastination and it's only something that I heard about recently in one of Ali Abdul's videos but it's so it's about how um, if you feel like you have a lack of control or I guess if you're just like unsatisfied with your day for any reason then during the night right before you go to bed you try to like take back control subconsciously and you do that by like scrolling through a TikTok um, or anything else like that so that did happen to me one time during the week where I was like laying in bed I knew I had like 10 minutes before I needed to fall asleep and then I was just scrolling on my phone which was really dangerous because I went down this like Harry Styles rabbit hole on YouTube where I watched his YouTube videos and so I totally lost track of time and so yeah that happened and I ended up going to bed late that night but so yeah just be aware of that and if you can like put away your phone before you need to go to sleep so now that I've shifted my sleep schedule back to normal my next mission is going to be sticking to that and being very consistent with my sleep because that's really important because it's very good for you and let me know down below if you're planning on fixing your sleep and what your best sleep tip is because I'm always looking for new ways to like unwind and wake up earlier click this video over here to learn more about the science of why meditation makes us happy and remember to subscribe and like this video and I'll see you next time. Bye!